Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 2E, where we're talking about a particular kind of mutations that cause serious defects in coding sequences. These mutations occur when DNA polymerase mistakenly inserts uh, or deletes a base instead of just putting in the wrong base. And the consequence is that the reading frame used for translation into amino acids is changed, and the resulting protein is basically garbage. Now, we talked about replication errors by DNA polymerase that have usually little or no effect on function because the wrong base either doesn't change an amino acid or it changes an amino acid that's not important for the protein's function. So that a substantial fraction of these mutations, even in coding sequences, are functionally neutral. But DNA polymerase can make another kind of mistake, a mistake where it inserts or forgets to insert a base. And this causes a frame shift mutation. And because the new reading frame hasn't been subject to natural selection, it's effect effectively, functionally, it's garbage. And so these kinds of mutations are not neutral. They're almost always a complete loss of the function of the protein. Now, this is a repeat of the diagram that I showed in Module 1 to give you sort of a text-based intuition about DNA and RNA and protein. So we'll think about how frameship mutations work in this context. So the top line represents DNA coding for a gene, and it's got two start code signals, one for transcription, one for translation, and two stop signals, one for transcription and one for translation. And in between are, is the text that codes for the function of the protein. The transcription line, this is a messenger RNA. This is text representing a messenger RNA. It was begun using this external start signal. So the transcript includes the internal start signal and the internal stop signal. These will be signals that control translation. Below this, we've got the same sequence broken down into its triplet codons, which here words are serving the analogous function to triplet codons. And below, we have the protein that this messenger RNA will be translated into. In this case, we translated the fat cat ate the big bad rat into Korean. Now, what would happen if there's a frame shift in the DNA? Well, here's our frame shift. We've added a C here. And this, the only effect is that the DNA is one base longer. Not a big deal. It doesn't affect transcription. They start signals and the stop signals are unchanged. It's transcribed normally. It's just one base longer. The problems arise in translation. When we parse the text into its three-letter words, we find that suddenly we go from making sense to gibberish because we're reading the words in the wrong reading frame. And this, of course, means that the protein that we produce from the sequence is gibberish. This is um, this sequence translated into internet symbols. Um, only the sequences before the frame shift are normal. This protein, of course, is not functional. Um, and so the rat runs away. It doesn't get eaten by the cat. It's also frequently shorter than the protein that should have been made because very often these um, unselected reading frame triplets include triplets that specify start code, stop codons. Now, let's think about what would happen if instead of a single base being inserted or deleted, DNA polymerase made a slightly bigger error. What if instead of inserting a single base where it shouldn't have, it inserts two bases? Well, the reading frame is still going to be shifted. It's going to be a different frame shift. It'll be reading the third possible reading frame, but it'll still be out of frame. 
What about though if it inserts three bases? Well, actually, three bases is just fine. The reading frame is going to stay the same. There will be a one codon insertion or deletion. Um, but the rest of the protein will be the same. And it may be that inserting one amino acid or deleting one amino acid from the sequence doesn't have a dramatic effect on its function, whereas a frame shift always has a dramatic effect on function, almost always completely eliminating the function of the protein. We can apply the same logic to four bases or five bases. They are like two bases going to produce completely non-functional proteins. So what we've done is pretty simple. We've thought about one thing, frame shift mutations, how mutations that insert or delete a base will shift the reading frame of coding sequences. This causes the wrong amino acids to be inserted, not just at the site of the frame shift, but at all the positions downstream from there, all of the positions that the ribosome moves through past the frame shift mutation. Um, very often, the frame shift means that the reading frame that's being used, the wrong reading frame, is going to contain stop codons in unexpected places. So usually these defective proteins are not very long because pretty soon the ribosome hits a stop, stop codon. And this effect applies not just to single bases inserted or deleted, but to any insertion or deletion that isn't a multiple of three. Now, coming up next, we're going to think about another class of mutations that can have serious functional consequences. And those are mutations that are not encoding sequences at all, but are in other functional sequences in the DNA. Hope to see you there.